Hello, welcome to Christian. I'm Christy. Uh, my thing is trying to mess up, but maybe it'll, maybe it's recording and maybe it will do good. Um, I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, God is good. I love him. I appreciate him as always. Always wanting him to be magnified and lifted up in everything that I do. So uh, I'm here and I want to talk today. Um, actually, this is going to be like a two-part series because I really want to spend a little more time on the second part of this study. And the first part of the study is just kind of getting our minds and our perception, I think, in the right place. So um, bear with me. <laughs> and uh, and I don't want to take a whole lot of time at one time, so I broke this up into two, two studies. Um, but um, it's to the um, pulling down of strongholds, uh, the weapons of our warfare. It's not carnal. It's not of the flesh. It's nothing that we have within our flesh, which is what I want to talk about first is, you know, the difference in the flesh and the spirit or, or crucifying the flesh, which we'll get into that. And the reason why I want to establish that is because you cannot fight spiritual battles as long as you are still living in or after the works of the flesh or the ways of the flesh. Uh, we have to crucify the flesh. You know, Paul says in one of his writings that he knows within himself there's nothing good. There's nothing good in the flesh. There's nothing good that can come out of walking in the flesh. We have to crucify the flesh with the lust thereof because, and I'll get to the scripture because the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. So we have to crucify this flesh before we can take on these spiritual things, the, the, um, the whole armor of God, you know, all these things, you know, to be armed with and all the weapons that we have to fight with are of the spirit. And if we are continuing to walk or live after the flesh, we cannot, we cannot win and fight these spiritual battles. So first and foremost, you know, we have to, to give our hearts completely to God. Um, if we go into spiritual warfare, um, just know that if you've not crucified the flesh, you're not going to see the victories or the outcome that you need to see or the victory that you need to have if you're still in the flesh or you're still carnally minded. We have to crucify these things. We have to submit ourselves to God. Um, if you have not submitted yourself to God, you can resist the devil all you want to, and he's not going to flee because the devil doesn't submit to you. The devil doesn't flee because of you. He flees because of God. So we have to submit ourselves to God. We have to give ourselves to him and then resist the devil. And the devil will have to go because we've submitted to God. So you can't miss that step. You can't resist the devil if you've not submitted to God. Um, just some words of wisdom there. If you're in your early walk with God, if, if you're just trying to fight these battles and you know of God, but you don't really know God or have a relationship with God, that is important. You can't overcome the enemy. You can't make it through this life. You can't do what you need to do if you don't give your heart to Jesus. You can't win in these battles if you don't give yourself and your heart to Jesus. Um, that's that. That's just the first step you have to take is giving your heart to Jesus. Um, uh, let's see. First Peter 4 and 2 says, um, and this is talking about, um, you know, Jesus died in the flesh for our sins. And because of what he did, we should, it says that he no longer should live the rest of his time 
in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. We don't need to live in the lust of the flesh, but we need to walk in the will of God. And we can't do that if we've not submitted first to God. Um, the, the scripture that the, 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 the Bible, the scripture that I'm going to be focusing on, but is second Corinthians 10, three through five. But, but today I'm focusing kind of on just verse three, because verse three says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Um, we are in the flesh but we're not warring after the flesh. Um, the, and I want to pause there because then I want to go to Romans 7 and 23 that says, and this is Paul speaking, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity the law to the law of sin, which is in my members. Um, Paul says, you know, I'm walking, I'm trying to walk for God, but there, I see this other, I see this other law warring against it, against my mind, the war of the flesh and Galatians five and 17. Well, I want to read 16 and 17. Um, it says this, I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Um, and verse 17 says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. Um, the flesh is constantly fighting against the spirit. And the spirit is constantly fighting against the flesh. And they will never get along. You cannot live in the, live after the flesh and after the spirit. You cannot walk in the flesh and in the ways of the flesh and in the ways of the spirit. They're contrary. They will never get along. You have to give up one. You either walk in the will of God after the flesh or walk according to your own will in the flesh. You know, you can't, you can't have it both ways. And so, yep, yeah, I read that, and I read that. Um, and Ephesians 6 and 12 says, "For we, I know this probably is kind of, but I, I pray, I pray that you get the heart of this message, um, the heart of this study. Um, and Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. So again, as Christians and as we are in this life, even as we're in our Christian walk, there are battles that's going on. There's spiritual warfare going on as high up as the White House, you know, as high up as you can get to as personal as you can get our daily walk. There's always a spiritual warfare. There's a spiritual battle. And as long as we are living in the flesh, or living rather, I say, after the flesh, we're not going to have victory over these spiritual battles. Um, we have to have, you know, put on the whole armor of God. You know, we have to submit our heart. We have to submit our minds to God. We have to give ourselves holy to him, um, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a whole nother strength that we have. But, but even if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, Eve, give your heart to Jesus, walk after his way, walk after the spirit, after him and work towards being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's my encourage. I encourage you, if you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost, if you don't understand the Holy Ghost, um, I'll try maybe, the, if the Lord allows me, or whenever he tells me to, because I try to go according to what he guides me to, you know, we can do a study on what is the Holy Ghost. A lot of, a lot of Christians, a lot of people in churches, you know, may 
may not even understand or know about the Holy Ghost or what it is or who it is or how it can live in you or he can live in you. So, um, you know, maybe I can, Lord, oh, give me a study on that. A simplified study I try to keep things simple sometimes it's really hard to get um, to not get too too deep but God can help me do anything because um, once you start studying it's like the study runs deep here and deep there and deep there and I don't want to go over anybody's head because I want everybody to be able to get words of encouragement to get hope to get joy to get peace to get strength through these um studies um but i don't want to leave out anything important and you know god knows all that but um we can't we can't fight that that that's that's my 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 purpose for today establishing the the point that we can't fight spiritual battles as long as we are continuing to live after the flesh we have to crucify that flesh um, and that's what galatians 5 24 and 25 says and they that are christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit and 2 Timothy 2 and 4 says, No man that warreth, and this is talking about spiritual warfare, entangleth, if, entangleth, that's a tongue twister, a tongue tie, himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. If you are in Christ, you are a soldier of Christ. So you have to put on the armor that Christ gives us. We have to war and fight with the weapons that he has given us. And so we can't do that if we are continuing to walk after the flesh. If you are still walking after the flesh, but you've accepted Christ, you got to put aside. You've got to crucify. And it's a daily, that within itself is a daily battle. Paul said, I die daily. He has to, he had to crucify his flesh daily. We have to do the same. Flesh is easy because it's natural. It's our nature. And sometimes it's easier to do things of, of the flesh because that comes natural. But as Christ followers, we have to put aside those things and walk after the spirit. And you can read um, in Ephesians, um, you can read, it's either in the sixth, fifth or sixth chapter, um, the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. You know, we have to, we have to put off the lusts and the works of the flesh. And we have to submit to God and walk in the spirit so that we can be victorious in our daily warfare, but not only in our daily warfare, but we're living in a time where all the Christians are going to have to come together in prayer, maybe not in the same place, you know, that would kind of be difficult because I know there's Christians as far as the east to the west from the north to the south, but we got to come together in unity in prayer and in spiritual warfare. And to do that, we have got to come up out of the, the works of the flesh. We've got to crucify them. We can't live in them any longer. So I want to lay that foundation today. Um, the most important thing for this study today is to know that we have to crucify the flesh. We are in a war and it is raging. You know, we're in our personal war, but we are in spiritual warfare against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places and we have got to come together in the unity of the spirit in prayer and war against these things that are going on um, but we've got to lay down the flesh we've got to crucify that old flesh nature that sin nature that that 
that carnal mind and carnal thoughts. We've got to lay aside those things, crucify those things, and give ourselves wholly to God. Give ourselves wholly to the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to pray in the Spirit, um, to, to, to seek God for these things. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of the flesh. We ain't going to go hand-to-hand combat with the principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. We can only do that through the Spirit, through prayer, through fasting, through the Word of God, through speaking the Word of God. Um, so that is our goal. That is um, my hope, you know, today is to share and 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 hopefully um establish that we've got to we've got to get this thing together we've got to get on the same page uh we got to quit swatting at gnats and swallowing camels we got to lay aside denominational differences and divisions that's not founded on the truth in God's word. And those that are misinterpreted or misread, you know, we're going to have to come together that we can present a body of Christ that's not broken, a body of Christ that is ready to fight and warfare in spirit and in truth. And um, so I wanted to to start with that, getting flesh out of the way, I guess, would be today. We got to get, you know, flesh out of the way. Um, but I do want to move on in our next study because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Um, so I don't want to get started in that yet. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and end today. So that I don't get started in that because it's powerful. It really, really is. As always, I want to end with um, the priestly blessings. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Because he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God bless you.